G'day, I'm Ash. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the most lackluster update I have seen in War Thunder's history. Granted, Update Fire and Ice might be the most lackluster update, but it certainly is interesting considering that November is the 10th anniversary of War Thunder's existence. War Thunder being a free-to-play game definitely has its potential issues that arise from time to time. And there are certain people who call every single update a bad patch. But this, this single update to the dev server currently, is what a bad patch looks like. I would hesitate to say that this update looks worse than China did when it first came out. And even China had more unique and, and varied vehicles than what is currently on offer here for Finland. And I'm really quite disappointed. I'm normally a person who doesn't really like to make these type of videos where, oh my god, War Thunder did XYZ. I mean, yeah, I do clickbait a bit, but sometimes you have to. And I, I'm not exactly the most positive guy, but I, I do tend to base my criticisms in reality. There is no reason why people shouldn't be critical of the game and also have an appreciation and, and a genuine want for the game to get better. That certainly is in my case, but this this update is very, very strange. We're getting a bunch of vehicles that have already existed in the game for some time, and, well, a bunch of hidden vehicles, which, uh, you know, they're interesting to talk about, but they're not exactly content you'd call, you know, particularly interesting. But you break it down, and really you get four brand new vehicles. Six to seven vehicles that are modifications of existing uh, vehicles that we have in-game, and then the rest of the vehicles that are in this content update primarily well with the copy paste stuff Gaussian really only had to make one or two new skins for and with the mods they just had to make you know a new stuff on the existing model and then with the new vehicles in, in inverted commas most of the vehicles had to be made from scratch for example the boss Vark. So, that also includes this, the set version of the Abrams, the AS-47, the French SAM, based on the Mephisto tank, the Crocodile, the Churchill Crocodile, the German Half-Track, which I forget its name, the SDKFZ-9, I think it is, the TCM-20, the A-1H, and the Tor M1. Those are all the new vehicles, excluding some of the naval stuff, well, because, yeah, well, naval. Anyway, one of the other content creators asked whether they're finished vehicles mainly from other nations in this update because their assets are pre-built slash identical. Uh, and the response given was simply they are the ones that make the foundations and fill the most open gaps for the Swedish tree. More will be coming over time. Again, like the Italian tech tree's initial release, they'll probably be going through and adding vehicles down the line as they possibly can. But yeah, initially, the launch of a Finnish tech tree, you'd, surely you'd have a unique Finnish vehicle in that list somewhere. Because, you know, contains more vehicles already in game than when China launched. When China launched, had more unique vehicles than this. But don't worry guys, it's not a copy pasta. no no. It, it's strategic planning for later down the line despite this update being all about Finland. Yeah. I don't get very heated very often, but this is something that's made me incredibly just, just, I, I, I pissed off. Like, how, what am I supposed to say? I've already had several conversations with other content creators, and it's, 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 like, what are you supposed to do? How are we supposed to be excited about new content when this is what we get? On one hand, I'm not surprised that this is the case, but I think what makes it more difficult is how the community reaction has played out. And on the other hand, I really just... Oh, I, 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 I appreciate the fact that there is a new subtree. There is content there. I get this is a part of the War Thunder cycle. But you could have at least put some sort of flavor vehicle in the update at least instead of pushing it this early. And yeah, there is a 10th anniversary cake in the game files and there is a new hangar and there is also flavor text suggesting that there will be a Sturm Tiger event, which is a PvE event. But if that's all you're going to give for an update, considering that it's the 16th of October, probably two weeks time, this update's going to release with all the content that's been hidden. For example, all the other the, the finished vehicles which haven't been present on the dev server. Um, and there isn't, it really isn't really much to talk about currently. It, it really is. I mean, the new, new Abrams is nice. There's a couple of other newer things, like, for example, the Japanese T2. That is fantastic. But again... It's not something that you can really just talk about casually without upsetting a bunch of people. Now, don't get me wrong here. War Thunder has one of the weirdest 
game cycles ever. They add the mo m most content that I've ever seen out of any free-to-play game over a year's period. You know, we're looking at two, three hundred vehicles every single year, and that just that that mind boggles me a little bit because, well, you know, there's so much content yet there's also so much missed opportunity. Like, for example, this upcoming battle pass, this dev server is basically been all about the battle pass. The dropped toilet, which I did a community post on, uh, from from the uh, the Sky Raider, and then you've also got this this flaming crocodile uh, tank, which again is probably the most unique gimmicky thing Garjan could do. That you know, last update was all about the SU twenty five, right? And the previous update was all about the F fourteen. Like they need to capitalize on that. I get that they're a business. This is what happens. But I, I'm struggling to really comprehend the decision making here of the finished sub tree when it really doesn't contain anything that overall uh, unique. And, and that, I guess that's the takeaway here. We have plenty of vehicles coming. There's plenty of content coming. I'm not disappointed with the, 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 the way they've implemented the content. Although there are roundels and, and obviously camouflage issues and, and naming convention issues that actually probably we fix later down the line but for the majority of the time i am struggling to to really understand the appeal to this update because everybody i've been talking to has said that it is copy pasta it is the literal definition of copy paste even a yugoslavian or a benelux tree with some dutch aviation or stuff would be more unique than, than what we have currently but I get it. It takes new models. It takes time to create things. It takes time to schedule content. Blah, 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 blah. That's been their excuse for years, yet they're able to put out two, three hundred vehicles a year. Yeah, fuck. A, a Commonwealth tech tree with India, you know, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and Canada would probably be more interesting than, than Israel was. <laughs> I mean... I've been pretty absent from the War Thunder community. I haven't really interacted a great deal with it. I've been focusing on my real life job. I've I've been having a great time playing other games. When I've had to come back to this one for obvious reasons, I just feel disappointed. It's an update that leaves me feeling with, I, I, I don't know, internal screaming, I suppose is the words I'd like to call it, because genuinely there is nothing more depressing than looking at an update with optimism and then realizing that it, it's been it, you know it's, it's nothing but a marketing gimmick to say they're finished vehicles yet they, they are actually just a reskinned vehicle and the point being is there was no there was no point at which they, that they had said in any of their dev blogs about the new nation that finland would be getting more vehicles they had just simply said that sweden was getting a finnish tech tree or sub branch and that it would be finished. So everyone assumed that there would be unique vehicles in that lineup. Again, that's a kind of a good community assumption, but then Garjan's done a, a no you card and given us basically things that already existed in the game. Uh, it, it just, it boggles my mind how this, something like this can actually go forth and go into planning. I, I know the vehicles were already there, but from my inside sources, from what they're telling me is there is going to be a massive major update for War Thunder's anniversary. So it could be the fact that there just isn't enough time and they're publishing as much as they can while they can because, yeah, really that's all they're left with. So, again, I, I'm not entirely sure on the development cycle of things and, 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 and I can't really fault Gaussian Entertainment for what they've done here. They've chosen to publish some content, but from a community's point of view and a creator's point of view, is nothing but an utter disappointment. And I guess that's the point I want to drive home. I'm not annoyed with them. I'm not angry at them. This is fairly valid criticism of how they've delivered an update, at least on the dev server. It'll be interesting to see in the coming weeks what is added to the to the client to, to at least allow us to you know, showcase some uniqueness. But other than that, it's been a massive, massive disappointing uh, waste of time for content creators and, you know, other people alike. And I know Gaussian Entertainment has a lot on their plate, for example, all the updates that they do later in the year. This is a very intense time between, you know, November and uh, Christmas. But the point is, if Gaussian's not going to put in the effort, I won't either. My name is Ish. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.